Hello Year One, I am so excited to get to come and do some music with you guys. Um, I hope you're all okay. Um, welcome to my house, I'm in my kitchen and I'm going to teach you some music. So, are you ready to have a bit of fun? You're going to make some sounds, you're going to make some noises, you need a little bit of space to move about. Um, but let's get going, let's just get straight in there because I've got a lot to teach you about. Did you know that we use our voices to communicate? And we make loads of different sounds with our voices. Sometimes we talk to communicate. Sometimes we make noises. Sometimes we cry. Sometimes we laugh to communicate. And babies make noises as well, don't they? When they want something. And we use our voice in so many different ways. And we're gonna do a bit of experimenting with that today. Now, one of the things that we can do with our voices is we can make high sounds and we can make low sounds. That is called the pitch of a note. Everybody say pitch. The pitch is how high or how low a sound is. So let's have a little bit of an experiment with that, shall we? Everybody make a high sound. Everybody make a low sound. <laughs> that was a very high sound I made and a very low sound. And there's lots of notes in between. So when we talk about the pitch of a note, we're not just talking about the highest sound and the lowest sound. We're talking about all of them in between. So we'll make a low sound. Can you make a lower sound? Can you make a low sound that's higher than that low sound? Okay, everybody make a kind of middle sound. Can you make a sound that is higher in pitch than that sound? Let's go back to our middle sound. Ah, uh, can you make a note that is lower in pitch than that sound? Ah. Uh, now, let's see if we can do something quite fun with our voices. I want you to start at the lowest pitch that you can make your voice into, and then we're gonna go all the way up to the highest sound, the highest pitch of the note that you can make. Have a listen to me first, if you like, and then you can have a go. Ready? Uh... <laughs> you have a go. Ready? Uh... <laughs> Did you hear all those notes in the middle? All those different pitches of note in the middle? Those different sounds? This time, let's go from our highest note to our lowest note. Have a listen to me first. You have a go. Ready? All those different sounds, all different pitches, some really high, some a little bit lower than that high, but still high, some really low, some higher than the low, some lower than the low. So that is pitch. We can change the pitch of our voice whenever we want to, to do whatever we want to. If we want to talk in a high pitch voice, we can. If we want to talk in a low pitch voice, we can. I think I'll go back to my normal pitch if that's okay with you. Now, there are a few words that I'm gonna teach you today. We've learned pitch already. So everybody say pitch, pitch. Remember that, how high or how low a sound is. The next word is dynamics. Everyone say dynamics. Dynamics. The dynamic is the difference in volume between sounds. So you might say loud and quiet are dynamics. But in music, you're going to have a whole range of sounds. Some of them will be really loud. Some of them will be really quiet, and then there's so much in between, like we just did with the pitch. It's not just the highest note and the lowest note, it's 
all the sounds in between the different pitch of the note, now we're looking at the dynamics. So, I want you to make a really quiet sound. Ready? So quiet. Next, I want you to make a really, really loud sound. You might need to give people some warning. Are you ready? Ah! <laughs> so loud! Ah! You blew my head off! So we've done a really quiet sound and we've done a really loud sound but let's try something in the middle. So a kind of middle dynamic is ah. What I want us to do is start at a middle dynamic and get louder and louder and louder. Have a listen first. Ah! Uh, can you hear that? See if you can do it. Start in the middle. Ah! Uh, and get really loud. Well done. This time, we're going to start in the middle and get quieter and quieter. Are you ready? You can listen to me first if you like. Uh, uh. Oh, my voice kind of stopped there. I tried to get quieter, but it kind of just cut out. Let's try it together. Start in the middle, and then we're going to get quieter and quieter. You ready? Uh, it did the same again. It just disappeared. In music, you hear a lot of different dynamics. Sometimes you get even silence, no sound at all. Be silent for a few seconds. And then sometimes you get the loudest crashes ever. That's dynamics, the difference in volume between sounds. So we've got pitch, how high or how low a sound is. Dynamics, the difference in volume between sounds. Imagine you've got a volume uh, control on your head and you can turn yourself up really, really loud or you can turn yourself down really, really quiet. The next word is the word duration. Everybody say duration. Duration. That is how long a note lasts. Okay, so if we wanted to do, well, we could say it, we could talk about it in kind of like a long note or a short note, but it's not just going to be there's one long note and then there's one short note. The duration of a note is how long it lasts and it might feel really long and go on for a really, really long time or it might just be really short. So here is a really, really short duration of a sound. You ready? Everybody do that, Boop. and again, Boop. and again, Boop. really, really, really short sound. Let's see if we can do it a little bit longer. Boop. 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 Okay, so it's a bit longer, but it's still a really short sound. <sighs> okay, take a deep breath. We're gonna make the longest sound that we can possibly make, okay? Are you ready? We'll do it together. Uh, take a deep breath in and then we're going to hold the note for the longest duration that we possibly can. Ready, steady, deep breath. Uh... remember to breathe if it feels like you're running out of breath take your breath you can't keep going if you don't breathe but that was a really long note so the duration of that note was really really long so we get long notes we get short notes we get those in between a little bit like this ah uh... It's not the longest note, it's not the shortest note, but the duration of that was just as long as it lasted, probably a middle-sized amount. So that's duration. We've got pitch, how high or low a sound is. 
dynamics, the difference in the volume between the sounds, duration, how long a note lasts. Then we've got tone. Now the tone is the pitch, high or low, the quality, that's how good the sound is, and the strength of a sound. Now this is quite fun. We're gonna mess about a bit with our voices, okay, you ready? I could make a really high sound that sounds really nice in tone like this. So there's a high sound with quite a nice tone to it. I could make a really high sound, but with not a very nice tone to it. So the quality of it isn't quite as good as that, but the strength of it might be. Are you ready? <laughs> loud sound is loud. It's not a very nice quality because it doesn't sound great. The tone is not nice to listen to, but it is high. But the tone wasn't nice. You might have wanted to put your fingers in your ears at that point. We can do it with a low sound as well. So we can do a really nice quality, strong, low pitched sound with a, a nice tone. Have a listen. Uh, see if you can do it. Uh, or we can make ourselves sound a bit like a low foghorn on a big ship. And we would have the loners, but we wouldn't have a good quality. We wouldn't have a nice tone to it at all. A bit like this. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> your mums and dads or whoever you're living with, your grown-ups at home will just be thinking, what on earth are they doing? It is music. We are learning. The last word that I want us to look at is quite a posh word and it's called timbre, but it's spelt kind of like timbre. You say timbre, okay? And that is, it's the particular tone that makes it stand out or that distinguishes a sound that makes it stand out or a combination of sounds. So if you had a few sounds going on at the same time, like you had a really nice tone sound like this, ah, and then you had this kind of sound, ah, the timbre of the two sounds are really different. So you know that one's got a nice tone to it, one's not got quite such a nice tone, but the timbre of the two sounds are, is very different. That's quite a complicated one to get your head round. So if we encounter it again, I'll bring it back up to you, but I thought it was worth introducing you to that, that word, timbre, um, because it is about the distinguishing between different sounds. So you might be able to do this, or you might go, ah, or you might go, or you might go, Meh, or you might go, ah. All of those different tones of notes are the difference in timbre. They all stand out from one another because they're not the same. So we've got the pitch, how high or low a sound is, dynamics, the difference in volume between the sounds, duration, how long a note lasts, the tone, the pitch, the quality and the strength of a sound, and the timbre, the particular tone that distinguishes a sound or a combination of sounds or makes it stand out. Okay, so they're a bit complicated, but that is a bit of an overview of some quite important words in music. You might have heard some of them before. I heard that your topic is dinosaur dig. I love doing about dinosaurs. And did you know that dinosaurs communicated using their voice as well, making different sounds? I imagine that they were quite dynamic creatures. And when I say that, I mean they were probably quite loud um, and they probably entered a place and made so much noise that you were like, woo, 
something is coming and it is loud. Right, I thought what we would do is use our knowledge of these five words, looking at our pitches, our dynamics, the duration of a note, the tone, the timbre, and see if we can do some dinosaur sound effects. It could be tricky. I think you're gonna be better at this than me, but we're gonna to listen to a sound effect and then we're gonna try and mimic it. And we're gonna imagine the kind of dinosaur that possibly made that sound. Right. So here is a picture of a triceratops. It had three horns and it moved on four legs and I wonder if it sounded a bit like this. Okay, can you imagine it making that sound? I could imagine it making that sound. Let's see if we can copy the sound that a triceratops might have made. Now, when you listen to it carefully, you can almost hear, it's almost a bit like a lion's roar and you can kind of hear it vibrating in the back of their throat, which is like a kind of sound. Now I can do that by, I don't really know how I'm doing it. In the back of my voice, I can make it kind of roll like this. Or you might be able to go like that. So let's listen to it again and see if we can copy the sound. Here we go. So it's, it's quite low to start with. And then it drops down again. Like that. Mine wasn't very loud. I don't feel like my voice can make that very easily. I bet you can. Can you do it? Really good. Loads better than mine. Let's do it one more time with the sound effect all together. See if we can be a triceratops. You ready? Here we go. Well done. This is fun experimenting with our voices because our voices can do loads of things and it's so interesting to see what we can make them do. Now, the next dinosaur that we're gonna have a look at, have a look at this picture, it's a Titanosaurus. It was probably the largest dinosaur in the world and it was the length of four buses and its heart weighed the same as three people. Oh my goodness. He was ginormous. I would imagine that he would make a quite low sound. You can't really imagine him going like this, when he's that big. I think it would be quite a low sound. Shall we have a listen and see what he could have sounded like? Here we go. It's almost a bit like a, it's almost a bit like a hum, like mmm, 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 a bit like that. See if you can do that. See if you can make a hum as low in your voice as you can. Oh, it's made my nose tickle. Humming makes my nose tickle. So see if you can make it as low as you can. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Let's see if we can do it with the sound effect again. Let's be a ti Titanosaurus. Here we go. Whoa, now 
if you heard that sound out in the open air somewhere and you knew a Titanosaurus was coming, you would run. Mind you, if it's the size of four buses all stacked up together, it could probably just, even if it's slow at walking, it would get further than you very quickly, wouldn't it? Goodness me, that is a low sound. And I would say when you listen to the timbre of that sound, it's not, um, it, it would really stand out amongst other sounds. Like imagine if you could hear birds singing around you or you heard a lion roaring and then you heard that, you would notice the difference. And the tone of it is low, but it's not a very clear sound. It's almost like a rumbling sound, but it's a strong sound, that's for sure. Okay, so that's the Titanosaurus. The next one, have a look at this picture. Oh, the baby dinosaurs popping out of their eggs. Look at them, aren't they sweet? Shall we see what a baby dinosaur might sound like? Here we go. Now that's a much higher sound than the one we did before. It makes sense in some ways that a really big dinosaur makes a really low sound and that a teeny tiny dinosaur makes a higher sound. So let's listen to it again and see if we can copy it. It's almost like ah, ah. Oh, that sounds maybe a little bit too like a bird. A bit like that. Can you have a go? See what you can do. We'll just play it again for us and let's see if we can do that sound together. It's higher than I thought it was. A bit like that. It's higher than I thought it was. Okay, so that's the baby dinosaur. Then we've got a pterodactyl. Okay, here we go. This is the sound of pterodactyls flying over our heads. Did you know that a pterodactyl could fly at a speed of up to 80 miles an hour? That's faster than you're allowed to go in the car. So let's listen to what they sound like. kind of like a cross between the dinosaurs that we've been doing and a seagull isn't it so it's like <laughs> like that that kind of sound really low then a bit higher really low then a bit higher and then like a, a high pitch sound that almost sounds a bit like a whistle <whistles> and then a like that sound as well that's really low so there's loads of different tones in that isn't there Let's listen to the sound again and see if we can join in with it, shall we? Here we go. <laughs> see if you can whistle as well. Wow, that was amazing. Pterodactyls do sound very different to the other dinosaurs, don't they? But they do sound, they do sound a bit like seagulls to me, that did. It sounded like a seagull mixed with a, a Titanosaurus. Should we have a look at what a T-Rex might sound like? Could you imagine the dynamics in the sound that a T-Rex makes? I imagine that he would be pretty loud. Should we have a listen and see? Whoa. 
the, du the duration of that sound was really quite a long sound, wasn't it? I feel like if we saw him in real life, it would make our hair go back like that. Let's listen again. It's a very low sound, but it's a very loud sound. And it's gonna be quite a dynamic sound as well. So we've got to try and get the tone right of this. Let's listen one more time and see if we can do it. That is a proper roar. And then it kind of ends with a hum, doesn't it? I might do that at the end. Let's try it again. Here we go. Oh, I should have taken a breath in the middle of them. That was quite a long sound. It, its duration was quite long. Wow, the T-Rex sounds pretty scary to me. Okay, next one is a Brachiosaurus. Did you know that a Brachiosaurus had such a long neck and a tiny head? Did you know its nostrils were in the top of its head? So it did it smelling from on top of its head. Interesting. So here we go. Let's see if this might be what a Brachiosaurus sounded like. That, can you hear the echo on that sound? So it's like, it's a bit like a foghorn. And then you echo it a bit. So if you can do it. Let's try it. like they're talking to each other like one brachiosaurus shouts one of the others and the other one shouts back that was an interesting one I quite like the echo on that one and then the last one that we'll do a bit of experimenting with is a composcnathus I think that's how you say it it was considered to be the smallest dinosaur it was shorter than a grown-up's knee. So can you imagine a Compostnathus next to a Titanosaurus? Whoa, it's like having it's like having four big buses lined up against each other, and then this little dinosaur just standing at the front of one bus and not even being as tall as the wheel of the bus. Wow, so it was quite a small one. Let's see if we can hear what he would have sounded like. So that's quite a higher sound, isn't it, as well? And even though it probably sounds quite loud to us, imagine that sound next to the Titanosaurus sound. I imagine the Titanosaurus would have been so loud that trees would have been shaking. Whereas this one, because it's smaller, it wouldn't have done anything like that. Let's listen again, see if we can make that sound. <laughs> I am making some very interesting sounds. Now, 
we want to have a look at these sounds and the way that the dinosaurs make their sounds. We'll do it again. And this time we're going to put a few movements to those sounds. So we'll run through the sounds really quick again. And then we're going to put some movement to it. Okay, so find yourself a space and get ready. Okay, so let's see if we can now use our bodies to try and represent some of these sounds using much bigger movements. And let's see if we can be the dinosaurs that, um, that match the sounds that we've made. So I think we've got a Triceratops, we've got a Titanosaurus, Hmm, which is a massive one, so and it had quite a long neck, so I might, I might kind of do that kind of movement when it gets to the Titanosaurus. The Triceratops moves on all fours, doesn't it, with its horns. Um, then we've got the baby dinosaur hatching out of the egg. Then we've got pterodactyls, wah, 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 and they go, they would move everywhere, wouldn't they? Then we've got a T-Rex, which is quite the king of dinosaurs. A Brachiosaurus, again, has got the, the long neck. And remember, its nostrils are in its head, so it would probably move its head like that, do you think? Um, and then the Compognosaurus, which is the tiny little one that was really small and no bigger than a, a person's knee. So... We're going to, we can try and do that one. Maybe that one probably was a little bit quicker. We're going to hear all of these sounds, okay? They're just going to go back to back, so it might go quite quickly. Let's use our bodies and be dinosaurs, shall we? All right, then. Here we go. Triceratops, triceratops. So tops. Then we've got a Titanosaurus. Then a baby dinosaur coming out of an egg. Now we've got the pterodactyl. Very good. Then we've got a T Rex. Making that calling sound. because I can't even remember, I couldn't even say it properly. <laughs> okay, well done everybody. Oh, that's worn me out a little bit. I couldn't even remember how to say the compognus, compos, compos, Oh my goodness. Look up that dinosaur. I can't remember how to say it. I'm getting all jumbled up. I thought we might do something just a bit fun to finish. So I found a song for us and it is called Do the Dinosaur Stomp. So we're gonna use some of these actions. You can use some of the sound effects, use your voice um, to make some of the sound effects. And we're just gonna have a little bit of a dance together, pretending that we are dinosaurs. Are you ready? Big footprint.
Well done, everybody. Oh. Ah! Oh. Well done. Now, I hope you enjoyed that. That was great fun and I can't wait to see you again next time. We'll see if we can have a look at that again next time, shall we, and do a bit more dancing too. Okay then, see you soon.